Right. All right. Awesome. Here's the box for you. Back call the meeting to to order and introduce our president, Mr. Vince Bollinger. Hey. Thank you, Mr. President. If you could all please rise. Here, if you could please join me in reciting the national anthem and pledging allegiance. I've said that twice now. In yeah. pledging the state in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance and saluting our flag. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America. America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have a makeshift volunteer timer for the time being? Or do the closest person to me. You don't have a role today, obviously. Why don't you help us out by giving us an opening invocation for the time? Opening invocation, okay. Well, my opening invocation would be the philosophy that I used to drive my life, which is from the movie Unbroken. In there, it was a rather simple philosophy. Do the best you can, have some fun along the way, and one day the angel of death comes and takes you away. All right. All right. Thank you. Please be seated. All right, so, we have a quick business meeting before we have the speech recognition that we've had the last several weeks here. Do we have a little brief for us? I not. Oh, well, I don't think anybody else picked up the ball on that in that regard. So I don't think we have any minutes now. Many minutes from last week's business meeting, but if anybody kind of wants to correct me, feel free. Old business, I guess we could bring up the the holiday donation that we have done from every year that we yeah, right around the holidays we like to donate to the gracious host, and currently that host is ILM. And we've had discussions offline for the last few weeks, and we've come to the conclusion that the club will be giving another fifty dollars donation to the charity of my choice. So I will be court. I will be figuring that out with the powers that be here at ILM this week, and we'll try to present that to them next week. It'll be yeah. Okay. Is that good? Well, perhaps if you want to go there, maybe we'll note that for a next week. Good business. And we have any business to prep? Pertinent to a lot of members here, especially one person who isn't here. You might want to take part in that. And moments of truth that I haven't, I haven't mentioned that quite yet, but I've known of that for a while. I've just been a little busy the last couple months. But moments of truth, there is a deadline to get that done. It's another, it's a, a much, much, much shorter program than what we've been doing the last couple months. But if we get that done by the end of next month, then we get a $25 gift certificate to the Postmasters International Store. I'm going to do that next week. Yes, Mike. What is moments of truth? Good question. I'm not really all that familiar with it. But in general, <laughs> it has to do with trying to see if we are doing things the way we should be. Moments of truth, like when someone shows up, how are we greeting them? How are we. Stuff like that. Is, you, is there anything you'd like to add, Ari, right here? Sure. Well, the moments of truth are six touch points that Postmasters International has identified as if you're doing these well then you'll have a stronger club and there are opportunities where you can reflect upon how you're you're bringing in new members are you running a good business meeting and so it's a, a moments where you might want to look at how are we doing and what can we do better it's definitely a gut check of a lot of things in a typical club meeting and the next kind of focus that i'm shifting on not only have we i don't feel that we've been a little bit derelict in a sense, club in general for the last over seven years now. But with a handful of new members, I feel like making sure that we are a little more on point with some things and also reflecting on what we've been doing lately would be a really good thing to do. So I'm looking at things like the moments of truth and high performance leadership and things like that. In the next few months, I'll be hopefully getting a lot of those things on the club success plan. Like that. All right. And we'll Anything anybody else wants to add? All right. Are we going to get a new computer, Brent? Yes. 
Great. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so with that, I'm going to adjourn our, our meeting. Typically, we would be having our break between the table topics and the speeches, but due to speech prep, we love to cut the, the break after the just meeting and delay the clock when the speech prep is done. I do. No, I just wonder if you want to work on the
Yeah, we were playing for I think I'm going to try to pass it out.
So can you see a bit here? Yeah, it's no big deal. Uh, yeah, did the timer arrive? Right? Oh, okay. I wondered where everything was. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Everybody, it's eight o'clock. It's time for our special session of speech craft. I'd like to introduce our president, Mr. Vincent Bollinger. All right, welcome. Thank you for being around here. Right. So, this is the final of our eight sessions of speech craft, and I think it's been great. I think we learned a lot. Draw a lot of this club in general. I think that the, the the mixing up of the different formats has been really great. I am a little bit exhausted. I'm glad that this is going to be over for my sake and my sanity, so I can actually breathe easy and take it a little easier, just like you guys have all been taking things in your life so it'll be easier. <laughs> I would like to introduce our guest, our area director, I believe is the term nowadays. Yeah. Beth Somerville. So Beth has been oh well, well, all right. <laughs> She has helped us out quite a bit, helped help me, help you guys, and helped lead our club as well. And she has graciously volunteered to give us to act as a guest speaker today. She's been here before, she's a regular speaker. She's been in Toastmasters for a few months. A few months. Just for about as long as like Laura has been my guest before. And <laughs> so she she will definitely be a valuable asset. I believe now she's finally starting to do manual speeches. I am. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been a distinguished Toastmaster this year. All right, so the first role that I'm actually going to introduce today is the timer role. Today is timer. Now, we did things a little bit different. You might you might think to yourself, okay, this speech craft's a little weird here. But we decided there are a handful of things where I was like, you know what, nah, I don't like that. Or, you know what, I'm going to do things a little different. And one thing that I decided to do was to make sure that the people that are typical members of Tech Masters are not going to have roles today. And we're going to be pawning that all off on the speech craft participants. So they're going to be fully ready next week to just be heads down members of Tech Masters. And today's first role is going to be the timer, and today's timer is Joe Pojic. Joe, can you tell us a little about, bit about your role and what you'll be doing and what the times are for the different parts of the presentation? Good morning. Uh, my name is Joe Tojek. I'm the timer today. So each of the speech types, uh, speeches, evaluations, and table topics has a different uh, timing to it. Uh, there's a green for the speeches. There's a green card at three minutes, a yellow at four, and a red at five. The evals have a green at two, a yellow at two minutes and 30 seconds, and a red at three. And the table topics have a green at one, uh, a yellow at one minute, 30 seconds, and then a red at two minutes. Great. One last uh, thing of note, best speech will be four to six. So four for the green, yellow at, at, at five, and red for six. Okay. So, all right, table topics. The we we work, we try to focus on learning everything about public speaking and communication and leadership here. We don't just practice our 
prepares agents, and we don't just practice our evaluations and things like that. We also need to keep on time with our timer. It helps us figure out how to stay within different limits and things like that, and keeps everybody honest and involved as well. Another thing that we like to do is practice our own proxy speaking for various reasons, such as last week we had interview questions, and we also want to be able to think on our toes in case we're making things up, like if we're standing in front of a room full of people, we're trying to figure out how to introduce a role, we have to make things up, right? I'm not doing that now. So for tabletop today, I believe our tabletop master is Chris Gibson. So if you could please help me give a warm welcome to Chris Gibson as he takes the lead. Fellow Track Masters. I am pleased to be my this I am pleased for this to be introducing. Boy, that came out well, didn't it? <laughs> I am pleased to be do, having my first experience as your topics master today. So thank you for bearing with me during this uh, initial experience. Uh, the role of the topics master is to present opportunities for everybody to participate in the meeting and if, so that everybody gets a chance to speak. I will be asking certain questions of throughout the meeting, especially those of you who have not been part of Speechcraft these last eight weeks. We want to thank you for your patience with us and for uh, stepping back from your usual participation so that some of us uh, beginners can experience those roles uh, as deeply as we have. And so now I want to thank you for your, your patience with us by uh, introducing these questions back to you uh, and bringing us back to something that's close to all of our hearts, which is technology, uh, something we may have gotten away from a little bit the last few weeks. And as we are getting close to the holiday season, I've decided to give us a theme of technology for the holidays. So uh, let me just start from the front and we'll work back. Um, I will start with Morris here since I know Joe's been one of us here. Uh, Morris, the holiday season is upon us. Please tell us what you believe will be the most popular technology gift this season and why. Mr. Cable Topics Master, fellow Toastmasters. That's a good question. I am not cutting edge tech all the time. I change tech when I have to, just like uh, just like when it comes to clothes. Uh, you you change them when they need washing. And so when it comes to tech, I would say the tech item of the year probably will be new and bigger TVs because I understand that there is, I believe it's called 4G TV out now. And I would think that would be a big seller. Me, I'm still living with my conventional tube TV, and I joke with my neighbors that someone is going to break in and steal it, and they think that's quite funny when I, uh, when I tell them that, because conventional tube TVs, I believe they're actually regarded as hazardous waste now for some reason. You can't put them out in the garbage. You have to take them to a uh, recycling place. So, uh, Mr. Cable Topics Master, that is, those are my observations on the holiday season and what will be popular tech. Thank you. And Madam uh, Director, uh, the, who will be the most likely to use the kind of guest that, gift that Laura's just shared with us? Mr. Table Topics Master, Bella Toastmasters. Well, I think that it's going to have the most attraction for the younger generation. Those of our generation, it's a TV, we don't really care. But the younger generation, they're so invested, not just in watching television, but in playing games on television and projecting the games that they're playing so that they're, it's like they're in it. <laughs> and the bigger and the better the television, the more into the game they can be. And so it's gonna be that generation that comes home from work and sits down and picks up the PlayStation and just is like, leaning in and you're in the game and you're playing it. And I think that's who's going to find this particular technology the most impressive. Now, of course, the challenge is, is they have to figure out who is going to give it to them for Christmas. <laughs> so I imagine right now they're making all sorts of letters to Santa and then, of course, to their parents and grandparents requesting the television. Back to you. We'll move on to William. Uh, William, what technology gift will you be most likely to give this year, and why? Thank you, Mr. Kevin Master. On the question of what technology <laughs> gift would I be most likely to give this year, I would have to say honestly that 
we, my wife and myself, we have not given technology for many, many years. Um, I believe this is because most of the technology that we gave as, as presents either got ignored after a few weeks or broke very soon after. And I consider myself somewhat old school. And it, it really hits me when I walk through the airport and I see children that are maybe eight to 10 years old with Beats headphones on. I don't have Beats headphones, and we certainly didn't buy our children Beats headphones. But you see that nowadays, it's pretty common. I feel kind of left out. I, I just took a plane trip and I didn't have my Beats headphones. Pretty much everyone around me in the airplane did. So back to the original topic. What would I give? I would probably give something that didn't cost a lot of money but was useful. And if it broke, I wouldn't feel bad if they had to buy their own. Thank you. <laughs> Move back to Brett. What technology gift would you most likely would you most like to receive? And if you don't get it, what do you think you'll get instead? Ah, very good question. Thank you, Mr. Cable Topics Master. What would I like to receive? Well, I've been dropping very, very subtle hints to my wife on that, that very topic. And I'd like a surface book. She knows that, but I'm not quite sure she's willing to, to drop that amount of money on her. Husband here. The other questions are interesting too. You, you mentioned what, what gift would I be likely to give? And we're going to be for December going to visit the in laws. And my father in law is very interested in, in gadgets, but he doesn't ever use them. He, he, he goes to the store, he buys all these strange gadgets for his computers and his phones, and then they just sit on his desk. <laughs> so my, my goal is to find a really, really interesting gadget that's pretty cheap, that has a really nice manual, because it seems like he just likes to read the manuals. So with that, and that's what I'm looking for, forward to give, but what I hope I get is the service book or the service floor, but probably won't get it. Thank you. Tony, do you think technology has helped or hindered the spirit of Christmas? Thank you, Mr. Table Comics Master. Fellow tech masters and get honored guests. I think I'm uh, <clears throat> take take the prerogative of a tabletop as person and hijack the question and jump back to some of the former questions. What technology gift am I most likely to give to any of my grandchildren? It's something that's that, 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 that involves. 26 leaden soldiers that can, commit, that can conquer the world. Most likely, I would give something like a book or maybe a set of blocks. I'd love to give something like a chemistry set, but those seem to have home chemistry sets and stuff like that seem to have been banned worldwide because we don't want to give our kids dangerous gifts. As to televisions being the most likely gift to give. I'm not so sure. If you look at the trends, people are using devices like these tablets or they're or even better the phones that and I've got a teeny tiny phone compared to what most people seem to want these days that are about almost the size of my tablet to stick in their pocket. That's what people seem to be consuming most media on these days, especially those 20 somethings. And sad sad to say my own grandchildren, who, who, of whom the eldest is six, are already, and the three-year-old, are already on tablets. Which returns me to the first topic of why I avoid, and my wife, we avoid giving technology, or at least electronic technology, to our kids in favor of the older Thank you. Mike, tell us your opinion of online shopping and its impact on Black Friday. Oh, Mr. Topic Master, fellow Toastmasters, is someone who spent a number of years working in tech systems for Best Buy Corporation, which happens to be very interested in this whole Black Friday. I'd like to hijack this question and go back to maybe something that maybe is talking about technology you'd like to receive. But let's go back a few years. Let's go back you know, to where we were when we were kids. And I was thinking about the kinds of technology that you know, we would get today versus the kind of technology we have back when. 
And I remember the erector set I had, which had the little, you know, the, the bolts and nuts, and it was all metal. And it was like toys were made out of metal, not plastic. You know? <laughs> and, and this was real stuff. You get your hands around it. They had little motors, and you could plug it in, and you could make a, a little you know, elevator that go up and down. That's not technology. I don't know what is. But if I think back, there's one other toy that I remember getting as a child. That must have been probably five or six years old because we were back in the house on, in, in, in Love Road, back in Roscoe, Illinois, and I, it was before we moved, and we moved in first grade. And I remember this, waking up in the morning and coming down, and there was this thing called the Whirly Bird. And if you remember the Whirly Bird, it's a little helicopter that's attached to a little spindle on a, a wire, and it would spin the thing, and it would fly up, and you could tilt it forward and backward. And I remember as a child playing with that technology, thinking, wow, oh, this is just so cool. And if you could have a hook on the bottom, and if you put the blocks on, you could go around and try to pick up those blocks and move them from point A to point B. And we would take our record sets and we would make little bridges and we'd try to, you know, like, anyway. But <laughs> playing with technology and getting those kinds of things back in the hands of kids, I think is kind of the goal of what Christmas could be. And if we look at Black Friday as an opportunity to go out and look for those kinds of things, I'll bet you if you go out to Amazon, you may be able to find some great technology like that. Mr. Topmaster. <laughs> Bibs. Surprise, you've just opened your presents and Tech Masters bought you a new Apple Watch out of club funds. Mm -hmm. Do you A, wear it with pride, B, trade it in for Apple Store credit, or C, re-gift it to Goodwill? Well, I think you've been able to help the Master and fellow Tech Masters. Uh, I'm going to take this time as I have to stand up to pass up these gratuitous to the, to the mentors here while I think it is less awkward than typical. <coughs> I should have looked. But anyway, so what would I do if the club bought me an iPad or whatever? Apple Watch. Apple Watch, yes, of course. Well, as much as I would love to use it, I would not I, I, would, I would not feel that it is right to be able to take what would essentially be the entirety of the bank account value from the <laughs> club and keep it. So I'd either really, really try to get you guys to reconsider and put it back and return it, or I would try to do something that somehow helps the club involving acts or something that would somehow reinvest back into the club, maybe? Maybe I'd work with Mike to to use the app that he's been building and maybe do, I, I went to a, a talk at CoCamp about using Xamarin on the Apple Watch, maybe I could use that kind of idea. To then make an app and then maybe put in the app store for five bucks or something. And then we could find the club and everybody could be membership or something like that. And also, I'd like to add that, that I will be the last one to answer the table topics question because we are out of time. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, I and with that, I want to call our president back up. Thank you, Mr. Vince Bollinger. Thank you, Chris. Very good job for your inaugural attempt at table topics. Now we are moving into the prepared portion of the meeting, and we have a few speeches here. I believe we have three from our participants here, and they've gone through a whole bunch of different aspects of speaking, and they, the people making speedcraft have run out of ideas, and they said that the last project is for you to talk about what you have learned. And remember, what we're going to do is I'll be introducing Jonathan, he'll be giving his speech, Three to five minutes, and then Jonathan will be after he's done, and we all give him a round of applause. We get guys down for a few minutes, and then he will be introducing Chris, and Chris will give his speech, and then he will wait for the applause to die down, and then he will introduce Joe, and then when Joe is done, he'll turn back over. All right, sounds good. So, one thing I'd like to say when I'm introducing Jonathan here is I believe that he's learned a lot. I think that he came in as a pretty calm, cool, collective speaker, and I think that he's grown quite a bit. And I'm happy to be, I, I'm happy to introduce Jonathan Elvin to tell us what he has learned in the last eight weeks. Thank you, Vince, for that lovely introduction. Good morning, everyone. I'm still waking up. I don't know about the rest of you, but I've been getting coffee. It's been a crazy eight weeks. I've been learning a lot, been practicing a lot, and I'd like to share some of those things with you all. I feel that. Of the several weeks that we've been here, I've learned how preparation is important, how timing is hard, and I have a lot to practice. 
this. I kind of alluded to preparation just a, a second ago. I am not very much of a morning person. I wake up early, but it takes me a while to really get going. And having to drive down here to Edina from Northeast Minneapolis in the morning, depending on what time I get out, traffic can be really good, can be really bad, but either way, I, I mean, I have to leave a little earlier. There have been definitely times where I've come in at those last minutes. Vince is kind of wondering, oh, is he going to make it, is he not? And oftentimes it's just, I'm still waking up as I'm giving my speech like I am right now. Preparation has been very difficult for me also because it's been, I lead a very busy life. I have lots of things to talk about as I'm sure you've all noticed, whether it's dance or video games or food. I like to keep myself busy. I like to go do things. I like to learn things. And so having material is great, having a busy life. But being prepared, oftentimes I'm kind of preparing my outlines the night before, or in fact this morning, maybe even the minutes before. <laughs> so having that preparation, it's really helpful when I actually do it, when I actually have that outline bullet by bullet. Uh, it doesn't always happen because life happens. So. Trying to do a bit more of that is something that you know, I'll be doing more of. But even when I'm well prepared, even when I feel like I have those bullet points in place, timing is hard. I feel like there have been a number of speeches that I've given where I've known the topic very well and uh, I could just speak on hours. And sometimes that's the problem. If I feel like I could speak on it for hours, I spend a lot of time on that first of three bullet points. Mm -hmm. Like I did with uh, what was it, the, the food. When I got to talking about, I think it was uh, El Taco Riendo. Man, I kept going and going and going. And then I saw that green card go up. I'm like, I still have two points in the conclusion to make. <laughs> I should probably start to wrap this up. And I later got dinged on that because, yeah, the, the punchline, the finish, it wasn't as solid as my intro, as my first bullet point on my preparation. So timing, I'm finding, is very difficult to do, especially during speech prep, where we're shortening it down to three to five minutes, as opposed to, I think, other speeches, which are usually five to seven minutes. And throughout all of these weeks, while I said I have much to practice, instead of I have much to learn. And I said that because while I feel that, yes, there is much to learn, the key thing really is going to be the practice side of things. Yes. I know a lot about this topic or that topic. I know I should be having my organizational notes. I should have, be getting to the point, staying on point. I should be using hand gestures. I should be using a little bit more vocal variety, which doesn't come naturally. <coughs> I know that I should be doing all these things. I've learned these things, but practicing it is going to be the key thing because practice is hard. It's going to be something that I need to drill into my habits, because habits stick. The only way to really deal with ha bad habits, or maybe poor habits, is to kind of write over them by with better habits. With all these things, I feel that I've learned much over these past weeks. I've practiced my preparation, I've practiced my timing, and I'm practicing all the other things that we've learned. I told you a number of weeks ago that I had a wedding speech to give, and I used a lot of the things that I learned, even in those first few weeks of speech craft, and it helped immensely. So I'm looking forward to all the more things that I'm going to learn and practice with all of you, including things like today, general event. Thank you all. <laughs> Next up we have Chris. He asked me to keep it short and simple. So I will leave you all with this piece of trivia. You are 10 times more likely to be hit by lightning than win the lottery. Next up is Chris telling us what he learned. <laughs> Thank you once again, fellow tech master and honored guests. I am, um, it is true that you are 10 times more likely to be hit by lightning than to win the lottery. I, I actually had to look this up to verify it to find out what the actual number was because you hear it so often you don't think about it that much. One of the reasons I don't think about it that much anymore is because, in fact, I have almost been hit by lightning. I, uh, I, I was living in Spokane, Washington shortly after college and was driving 
my riding my bike out in a, a, a horrendous rainstorm, uh, and it, it wasn't there when I started. But if you if you're familiar with the city of Spokane at all, it's it's almost like a smaller version of Minneapolis St. Paul. A, the Spokane River runs directly through a, a major ravine between through the middle of the city, and I would go across from my apartment across a huge uh, arch bridge, much like the Stone Arch Bridge, into downtown Spokane. At which point the rain came down. And I stopped underneath an overpass, and and the police came by and said, "You can't be here right now. Go home." In the middle of a, a, a very unpleasant storm, and so I'm heading back. I'm about two blocks from home. I pulled off into a park and stopped under a tree. Well, who really? stops under a tree in the middle of a lightning yeah. storm? That, that's real bright. <laughs> and and a lady comes out across the street and screaming at me to get out from under the tree. And I, just as I get off my bike, crack, and the tree gets hit, Ooh. and I get thrown to the ground. Oh, yes. Well, I did get home and was safe, and, and all, all was well and good. But I, I told this little anecdote only to prove the point that, you know, since I almost got hit by a lightning, well, it must almost be my turn to win the lottery. Okay? <laughs> now, up to this point in my life, and for many years after, in fact, I never purchased lottery ticket. Not had any particular, you know, failure. I just was stubborn about that sort of thing. However, on my first trip moving here to Minneapolis from uh, Phoenix, Arizona, as a matter of fact, I, it was late at night, I pulled off the freeway to a little gas station in the middle of Nebraska uh, to get a cup of coffee and purchased a lottery ticket purely as an excuse to get off the freeway. Now, as, as a matter of fact, at that time, what was, for that moment, the record jackpot in the history of the country, at the time it was $365 million, was being advanced. Now, we've had bigger ones since then, of course. However, you know, I, that was a lot of money at the time. And so I purchased a lottery ticket, moved on, got back in the truck, moved to Minneapolis. I'm staying at my uncle's house for a few days until my apartment's ready, and we watch the announcement. Somebody won that lottery, won that jackpot. And when that ticket was purchased in a little gas store, gas station just off the freeway in Nebraska. And for a little bit, I was I was that close. Now I, I ask you, you know, did I win the ticket? Well. Did I ever tell you about the time I almost, I almost got hit by lightning? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted, you know, I, you take little moments like this, and the, th the times in your life when you're, you're uh, the directions that could have been, and you look back at those, and even though that $365 million seems like a lot, I'm not sorry I didn't win it, because if I had, I'd probably have moved to Jacksonville, Florida, and I'd never had the opportunity to have the relationship I have with all of you right here. I mentioned earlier during table topics that I'm grateful for some of you taking a step back from your usual role so that we can do speech craft. Uh, I know my opportunities have been better, and I've learned a lot because of that. Uh, I Just a few months ago, I went to Code Camp at the University of Minnesota for the first time. This was back in April, before I met any of you. And I remember, I was talking to William with the one in October, and I remember I, I was standing against a wall. I'm looking to meet people. Uh, it wasn't that I felt like I was being judged, but I simply wasn't making the connections. Uh, anything besides a simple handshake seemed to be a bit foreign at the time. And here we were, fast forward six months later, here I met, you know, you guys right here, people like Vince were making relationships, Techmasters was hosting a session at the very same code camp again, and with your support, I was able to give a speech, in, uh, doing my icebreaker speech, talking about the subject of soft skills in front of 50 or so people as a keynote speaker at that very same code camp. Mm -hmm. And low if it didn't bring people in here, if it didn't make things better for all of us, and wow, what a difference a few months makes. So I just wanted to take the opportunity to say thank you to people like Vince and Mike and, and uh, Clea, who gave me my first Spark Plug Award when I first got here, and uh, Vince and uh, Brett and Mohammed, who've been so supportive during these things, and Alex, who's been a positive you know, you know, smile in the back of the room every week. Uh, so I want to thank every, every single one of you for these things and, and let me know that what I have learned has made a huge and significant difference in my life. And thank you very much, everybody. Feel free to continue going ahead with your introduction, but Joe had just sent me an email just this morning telling me that he had a slide deck. So while uh, you excited. Joe, I'm going to go ahead and load that up. Video support, support, what an opportunity. I'm going to take this opportunity to introduce Joe, who has joined us fairly recently. 
and he has always been a solid speaker here, brings a, a nice, calm voice that always makes me feel like I know what he's talking about. And ladies and gentlemen, Joe. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate that introduction. Uh, thank you, uh, Toastmaster and our esteemed guests. Uh, I'll introduce while, uh, while Vince is pulling up my deck. So my talk today is on, uh, I'm going to demonstrate what I've learned so far by delivering a speech uh, that I need to for work. It's, uh, it's on the Otho story. So I'm going to uh, show you a couple slides and give you some background on uh, the company that I work for, which is Optum. And clicking is an ordinal. It's not going to be a little slides. Just not all of it. That's a good point. <clears throat> Long introduction would have been difficult here. You should have given Chris like five minute and five minute introductions. Yeah, better warning next time. Yeah. yeah. We forgot how terrible this computer is. Hopefully this so will someone's donating the service slide. Sorry. All right, great. So let me uh, uh, go ahead and uh, start the speech here. So oh thanks. So Understanding the Optum story requires uh, understanding uh, the company and the uh, the two halves of United Health Group. So United Health Group is the holding company, and uh, United Healthcare is the insurance side, uh, benefits company, insurance. You're probably very familiar with them. Optum, on the other hand, is a healthcare services company. So uh, we create uh, software and systems that help run the insurance industry, and not not just for United Healthcare, but for other insurance clients, uh, but also for other segments of the health industry. So where an insurance company is a payer, uh, we also uh, support uh, providers, so doctors, offices, hospitals, uh, life sciences, uh, we deliver uh, technology that helps companies research uh, uh, new drugs, uh, pharmacies. We have uh, uh, other aspects of the healthcare company are supported as well. Um, OptumRx is one of those, so we have a pharmacy, uh, and then uh, technology companies, Optum Insight and Optum Health. So uh, in the in the revenue, you can see that the you know 130 billion a year, about uh, 47 billion comes from Optum itself, where the rest is United Healthcare, and that that number is kind of coming up now. So as insurance uh, industry changes. Uh, Optum is there to kind of uh, fill the gap and uh, to do that. So, so Optum, our story is this: we we have all the pieces to connect and serve the health system, right? So we actually, uh, you know, touch uh, 76 million individual members. Uh, we support not just United Healthcare's health plans, but up 300 health plans from across the industry. Um, um, life sciences, over 150 global organizations, uh, 67,000 pharmacies. Uh, our software underlies the, the health plans of half of the Fortune 500 company. Uh, we have software inside of four out of five U.S. hospitals. And we also support uh, uh, 31 states with uh, exchanges and other uh, technology to help them deliver to their constituents. So the, the big story right now in healthcare is how the market is changing, right? And there's two forces around that. Uh, one is, you know, consumers are becoming more engaged and, and that's huge, right? Consumers are having all these different experiences in uh, the other aspects of their life, you know, influenced by mobile and online shopping and, well, you know, having uh, technology at their fingertips. And the other, and that's also impacting healthcare. The other aspect is uh, focus on value, right? The healthcare plans are changing where in the past uh, they used to have coverage that would 
uh, you know, cover everything, and now you have typically your plants are more high deductible, you have more responsibility for your own care. And uh, so that's kind of hitting everyone and making them realize that they have, you know, more to think about with healthcare. So part of how this changes is that, you know, engaged consumers want a better experience. Uh, focus on value means we want we want to have improved outcomes of the experience. So we used to pay just for the, the visit or the procedure that you went to, and now the insurance company wants to pay based on if you got better or not, right? So, um, and then the other piece is reduced costs, right? The cost of healthcare, of course, goes up every year. And so we're, we're looking to leverage these technology enablers uh, to really impact all these things in the right direction, mobile, big data, social, and cloud. So Optum is the change agent, uh, and we have these kind of the secret sauce for this. It's number one, it's the people, right? So we have the 94,000 people that are employed there. Uh, number two is technology. So as, as the technology company for United Healthcare, we're actually, if you pull that piece out, we'd be uh, something like the ninth largest technology organization in the world. Um, number three, we have this incredible uh, source of data. On the one hand, we have uh, uh, claims data from the insurance side of the business. On the other hand, we have outcomes data from the clinical side of the business. Those two things together don't really exist uh, across the, the landscape at the scale that we have. So we have longitudinal data going back 20 years. And so we can figure out based on that, you know, kind of what treatments bring what outcomes and at what cost. And then finally, action. We have the scale to mobilize and achieve results globally, right? And so here's some example. I won't read all of these to you, but these are these are some of the, the impact in numbers around, you know, how much uh, we're touching people and impacting lives through the, the things that we do. So really what we're uh, looking to, to deliver from Optum is this, you know, creating a healthier world by powering modern healthcare, right? And there's three main pieces for that. Modernizing the infrastructure of healthcare. You know, we're coming from a time where uh, uh, there used to be a lot of paper-based uh, claims. Uh, moving into electronic health records and facilitating the exchange of those records and the security around those records. Uh, we want to help advance care, right? So our pharmacy services and our care delivery is, is really a focus. We have over 20,000 nurses that make home visits. Um, and then empowering consumers by giving them tools to, to manage their benefits and to manage their personal health. You know, what it really turns out at the end of the day is that our health is, is actually our responsibility and many things that we do in our day-to-day -day lives impact that. And so we're trying to you know, bring that to the consumers to help them focus on that in a way that, that has a positive impact. So my perspective on this whole uh, Optum story and the cloud is through the cloud. And so my team actually helps deliver documentation and training around the core stack. And what we're doing is we're actually building a complete cloud stack uh, in the, in the uh, model of an Amazon Web Services play uh, that, that delivers a specialized capability for the healthcare environment. So we've built you know, the data centers uh, actually here in Minnesota, uh, and we deliver virtualized infrastructure on those. So you can go to a service catalog and order up servers, uh, order up virtualized uh, cloud services in across the whole IT spectrum. Uh, then we're building a data layer, which is going to be uh, the, uh, the big data platform. That piece is coming online and that stack is very fascinating, uh, just based on uh, the number of tools and the life cycle of tools. I don't know if you guys are aware, that, like in big data, uh, the Hadoop distributions those things evolve and change. That stack changes like every two years. There's a new, a new set of tools on top of the new. So uh, that's pretty amazing. The core capabilities are around 
uh, you know, electronic data interchange, secure messaging, healthcare utilities. Uh, and then at the uh, software layer, we have a healthcare API. So we're building, uh, you know, microservices, RESTful APIs for many of the functions that our legacy systems uh, are able to deliver today. And we're, we're in the process of migrating from these legacy systems to this new healthcare API based on the cloud. Then you get to the top, you have uh, software as a service applications. Uh, we're providing and, and the access point, the very top layer. So Link is a piece of software that uh, sits in the provider's office, your doctor's office. It's a software as a service that has an app store. Uh, so that person has, uh, that doctor can, number one, you know, uh, access the apps that he needs uh, all on the secure cloud and then also see apps from other providers so we're actually you know inviting what you would think of as competitors to deliver apps to our customers through this cloud so this is not a uh, you know a competition play where we crush people with this it's a facilitation play where we create a cloud that works for healthcare and we invite all of the players to leverage that cloud to, to actually impact healthcare. And so the final, uh, final slide here is around uh, how my team supports this cloud. So we uh, actually deliver documentation and training in the cloud commercial portfolio for the knowledge and learning group, which I'm part of. And we deliver product documentation with the IT teams as they bring the cloud pieces online. And then we do training to help uh, train our internal IT staff to leverage the cloud. Uh, and that focuses on learning videos, uh, formal training. Uh, we do an internal developer conference every year, which I'm a big part of. Uh, we deliver industry training uh, you know, in technology, uh, Java, and some of the apps that are used. Social learning, we have a big play there where we have communities of practice and practice area experts that uh, collaborate to get things done in technology. Uh, we also support with our documentation, we build that into help systems. We have a, we use an offering tool called Madcap Flare, which allows us to single source uh, at the topic level and then uh, keep documentation up to date for very many audiences and delivery pieces. So finally, we're driven by our purpose and our values. You know, our mission is to make the healthcare system better for everyone and our values are around integrity, uh, compassion, relationships, innovation, and performance. And so, uh, you know, the new United Health is called Optum and Optum has great goals for the healthcare system and uh, I'd like to thank you for your time. All right, for great speeches, now we're going to go over to the evaluation portion of the meeting. And before we do with the general evaluator, we'll, we'll do our, our regular evaluations. Typically, we're going to have the general evaluator introduce the evaluators, but today we're going to just do the evaluations as is. Our first speaker was Jonathan, he, he will be evaluated today by Chris. Chris, can you please give your evaluation again? Jonathan, uh, first of all, I'm not. Thank you specifically for the introductions you've been giving me for the last few weeks during speechcraft. They've been uh, spot on and very uh, elementary and, and uh, elementary. Uh, <clears throat> spot on and very informative, pardon me. Uh, today, uh, as I saw you, you were pretty good for someone who is still waking up. Uh, I did take note that I've actually heard your I'm still waking up speech before. And you know, we've all been there. There's nothing worse than walking into a meeting feeling unprepared. That, that's always the thing that makes me freeze up. So you've got me right there. You're already one step ahead of where I'd be in the same role. So what I do want to suggest on that note is that when you have, a, a, because obviously you've got something you, you're ready to pull out of the bag and you run to that spot, which is a good idea. I want to suggest you change the topic just a little bit so that when you come in, you can actually take a, I've seen Mike do this. I don't know if he was unprepared so much as he got caught by, he needed to fill a short role. And he's caught up and he gets a really good improv talking about subject matter for good speaking. And I learned a lot that day from Mike. So since you're obviously a good speaker anyways, rather than talking about your weaknesses, talk about your strengths. Talking to say something you've learned already that makes you confident that you already know, 
And then when you're unprepared, you look like you're helping everybody else. Okay, that's that's my my one suggestion for what was obviously a good thing. You had really good vocal variety. Uh, maybe because you were unprepared, you didn't feel that you, you came up really sincere. You had good pitch and variety, and you had really good mo movements. I felt that because you were just stepping up and coming from the heart. And when you come from the heart, you're, you you come off as a natural. You really do. So thank you for that. I, it's a good subject on there. And just you know, look for specific things that you're better at already, and that you have made you more confident. And speak to those, and I bet that you're when you come into these same moments in the future when you haven't had your cup of coffee, nobody's even going to notice. So, our second speaker was Chris. Joe, do you have the nomination for today? Great. Chris gave a speech on uh, what he learned, and as I saw you, you had a, a great appearance. You're very welcoming in your expressions and your. Uh, gestures. Uh, as I heard you, uh, I wasn't exactly clear on what you were covering. Uh, I didn't hear a title in the very beginning or an outline of what you would cover, but uh, it was creative, and so uh, maybe I wasn't uh, paying attention or following as close as I could have. Um, but with your voice, I think you, uh, you, know, you do great uh, variety and enthusiasm in your voice. It's a very expressive voice. At times, you might want to watch the, the rate of your speech because you do tend to speed up at certain points and a lot of words flow out in a very short amount of time. Uh, did you achieve your objectives? Yes, I think you, uh, you wove the things that you learned into your story that you delivered and I thought that was good. Uh, and was the talk interesting? Uh, yes, but uh, at times I was still trying to follow and wondered where you were going. Uh, you know, it might be a device that you're uh, leveraging there. Um, and then to improve your next speech, I'm recommending that you uh, you know tell us up front what you're uh, what you're going to cover, and then and then go ahead and take us on that windy road to get there. But thanks for your good job. And do we have an evaluation of Joe's speech from Jonathan? I do. All right, Joe, please stand. Well, Jonathan, evaluate. Sure. Thank you for that great speech, that great presentation. I love the slides. Uh, they were very informative, and I feel like that was going to be the overall theme of what your presentation was. It's very informative. Some of the things that I, I noticed was that, and as I saw you, it was you spent a lot of time looking at your laptop, or at the laptop, the slides, looking at the controller sometimes, and then looking at the slides on the projection screen. But I didn't see as much of that I would have liked, maybe, would have been eye contact with the audience. I noticed when you would make eye contact, it would be very brief, and you'd start to look down, you'd start to kind of glance down. So rather than looking at maybe the inanimate objects around you, try to find something where, find that groove where you're more comfortable with the audience, keeping that eye contact. Because once you know the material very well, you'll be able to do it much more easily, and you'll be able to then engage. Uh, the material, the gestures I noticed though were very natural. They were very good. Uh, the controller in the hand, you were able to gesture to the screen and explain things. And I thought you did a great job on that. Um, for the material, like I was saying, slides were great, very informative. Maybe a little cluttered though. I noticed that a lot of these slides would have been great as a handout on paper, where I'd have the time to read through all the, the text but on slides. We are kind of looking at a glance, rather than spending our time reading on this and maybe not focusing on what words you're saying, you could split up the slides where maybe you could use half of what you currently have per slide instead. That might break up just enough, but so be able to use a lot of the material that you already have in place. With the void, with your voice, I didn't, I heard less vocal variety, I think, when it was something that maybe you weren't as familiar with. When you started talking about your team, for example, I heard a lot more vocal variety. You were a lot more, you knew the subject matter, you were much more comfortable with it. So I have problems with that myself, and I feel that it's true that if I know the material, it's a lot easier to kind of speak from the heart and have that variety as you do your speaking. So trying to become a little familiar with that thing, <laughs> but we're at Yale already, okay. Uh, so a little bit more inflection. There's a lot of us, ums, so's, so try to pause more instead of saying those. 
Did I interview a teacher girls? I think you did. I think you showed us a lot of things from very informative organization gestures. Some things to work on though would be vocal variety, engagement with the audience, and maybe a little less cluttered slides. So overall, great job. Great, thank you. Great evaluation. And so we haven't heard from Jonathan for a good seven or eight seconds. Let me. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, I'm a Dave's general evaluator. What is general evaluator? Normally, a general evaluator would be involved with a lot more duties. Uh, for the purposes of speech cut, I feel like Vince has taken on a lot of those things when it comes to explaining the different roles before people start actually doing their roles like time or grammarian. Some of those roles, such as grammarian, we're not really including for speech craft. Furthermore, Vince has explained some other things too. So my role as a value of general evaluator for this session, I feel, has been kind of hard down. So I did try to take my, do my best to take notes of what was covered, and I'll be giving my thoughts on some of those. First off, I'd like to hand things over to our timer, who let us, who's going to let us know how people did for speeches, for evaluations. Great. So uh, all the speeches, uh, the evaluations were on time today. Uh, the speeches were on time, except for mine, which went way over. Um, table topics were good, and uh, yeah, I think everyone was well within the, uh, the timing that they're looking for. Thank you. Next on the list, as you can see, is our thoughts on Toastmaster. Vince, he's been doing a great job all these weeks, organizing speech craft. He's making sure that every week that we are staying on track, uh, on topic, and making sure that all of us are prepared, making sure that all of us are reaching out to each other for introductions to make sure that we have the information that we need. And as well as things like keeping, I'm getting, I'm getting gestures here, so <laughs> keep, it, keep it going, okay. Uh, uh, as far as today goes, Vince has been, I think, good at keeping us on time for as you can just see, whether it was from, for table topics, making sure that we're moving on to these speeches and evaluations, uh, or even right now. Some of the things I did notice, though, was that he did take his table topics opportunity uh, topic to hand out certificates. And I was feeling like maybe that could have been saved for later, something a little bit more ceremonious, rather than just, oh, by the way, here's a, here's a certificate. I would probably save that for another time. Overall, I think, though, that Vince has been doing a great job with speech craft and he continues to do that even today. For thoughts on table topics, I thought Chris did a great job on bringing something relevant. This is Tech Masters, so let's talk about technology. And yes, holidays are coming up, so it was great to hear some of the ideas that Chris had. I'm trying to now think, do I have any ideas of the subjects at hand? I thought a lot of people did a great job of maybe reusing some of the questions that were asked. I did hear a, a few moments where I don't know if the the person speaking was really listening to the question, and said they did answer another question off in the end, uh, which still kind of worked out. So I remind people to keep listening to what the actual question is and see if you can really try to answer that if you are still planning to answer that as opposed to another question. Uh, thoughts on and with that, I guess I we have our Wise Owl Award, Chris. As Table Topics Master, this is yours to give or not give. Who would you like to give it to and why? Well, thank you very much, uh, Jonathan. The uh, wise, uh, before I give out the Wise Old Owl, i just make a few observations about Table Topics today. I want to thank all of you for really getting into the spirit of the holidays with me and, and uh, get, getting things started off with a real bang. And if we can uh, smile here and wish ourselves a, a happy uh, season together or giving and gifting, whichever our, our choice of holiday is. Then perhaps we can all be more in fellowship with one another today as, as uh, members of this world. So I want to thank each of you for doing that. And in that uh, in that spirit, I want to give the wise old out to Tony, who brought the real in, uh, in my mind brought the real heart of the whole questions today when we talked about his grandchildren and what uh, the gifts meant to him and to them. So Tony, thank you very much. <laughs> Speech 
reviews and evaluations. In the interest of time, I'll keep it short. But I think everyone did a great job. Uh, both speeches and evaluations, I think they've come a long way over the seven, eight weeks that we've been doing this. So to give all of ourselves a, a good pat on the back on that. Yeah. Do we have any other slides for Happy? Not for me. All right. <laughs> so with that, I'd like to bring back our Toastmaster, Vince. All right. So we're going to have one last thing. We'll try to my friends. So Beth Somerville is our guest speaker today. And she is the Area 96 Director for District 6 of Toastmasters. She is a longtime Toastmaster who was a reluctant member but has recently had her passion reignited. And now she's actually starting with her manuals and things like that. The speech is intended to outline the benefits of being a member of Toastmasters. Please help me along with that story. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, speech crafters, and our guest. So I'm the district or the area governor or de director or whatever that title is. And you're right to expect that I'm here today to encourage you to join Tech Masters. But what I want to do is rather than talk about all of the benefits that Toastmasters gives you that you already know about, I want to today tell you about some of the unexpected benefits that you can receive from being a Toastmaster. But before I start, I want to know, how many of you are watching the zombie shows? There's The Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead, iZombie, Z Nation. It's like everywhere you go, there are zombies. And it's not just the TV shows, it's this. <laughs> what is the combination of zombies? So the first unexpected benefit of Toastmasters is that it is an antidote to zombies. When you are a Toastmaster, you are constantly looking for things to bring into speeches. You're constantly looking for speech topics. So wherever you go, you're trying to pay attention. You're looking at the kids at the mall, interacting with your parents, and you're thinking, oh, that's so cute. That would make a great speech. You're working at something at your work, and you think, wow, this is really interesting. Tech masters would really appreciate this. I'm going to research a little bit more, and I'm going to make it a new speech. Toastmasters allows you to engage in life. Toastmasters is an antidote to zombie vacation. How many of you heard the old joke? Or rather, are you aware that they've done all these studies about what people fear? And people fear public speaking more than death. So if you're at a funeral, you'd rather be the guy in the coffin than the one giving the eulogy. But I know for everybody in this room, that's not true. You've all stood up here and you've given speeches. And even if your knees were knocking and your palms were sweating and the butterflies were going in your stomach, you did it and you were successful. So the second unexpected benefit of Toastmasters is it makes you brave. If you are no longer afraid of public speaking, what is left to be afraid of? Toastmasters gives you that bravery to be the voice that stands up and says, oh, wait a minute, are you sure? Toastmasters helps you be brave so you're willing to take risks that you would never have thought imaginable. Mm -hmm. Toastmasters makes you brave and allows you to really live the life you want to live. The third thing that is unexpected that Toastmasters provides is its friendship. We all hear about how Toastmasters is a good place to network. But when you come together with the same group of people every week, you ultimately learn, hey, these are kind of cool people. And you become friends with them. For instance, in my home club, there's about a group of six to eight of us women we're now celebrating weddings together and birthdays and those evenings when you just need a drink. There's something remarkable about the people that you may meet in Toastmasters. People who you may never have met otherwise. An unexpected benefit. So yes, it may be hard to come to Tech Masters. Tuesday morning, 7.40 a.m., you haven't had your coffee, it's hard to do it. And every week, you're probably thinking, ugh, really, every week? 
But Toastmasters provides you really fabulous skills. You become a better communicator, which affects your personal relationships and helps you be more articulate at work. Toastmasters is that place where you can learn leadership skills. And I like to say, you can practice these skills and fail without fear of firing. And yes, Toastmasters gives you a place to network. But what I think is really more important are the unexpected benefits. Toastmasters, when you really participate in it, it encourages you to engage in life and really live. No zombies allowed here. Toastmasters allows you to be brave, to step up and do in the role what you really want to do and not be afraid of that. And Toastmasters is a place where you can gain lifelong friends. So, speech crafters, why delay? Join today. sends me back to my seat. The district has these sweet little pins that they give out to people who are performing above and beyond what might be expected. And Vince has certainly done that by leading this club and <laughs> revitalizing the membership and hosting the uh, speech craft. So Vince, on behalf of myself and the district. <laughs> Went through a little bit here, and Kim Bruce was kind of just to kind of let us. We're very old fashioned, right? So, closing talks and speech crafts is great. What are we going to expect on, on, with with a typical membership of, of typical meeting of tech masters? You're going to learn about this guy right here. You haven't been hit with that, guys. You're going to learn it. This is a labor of love. This, don't don't think of it as something that's going to hurt your feelings or anything. But when you hear it on up from here on out, you're going to hear this. So you're going to get better at that. Okay. Trust me. And let's see what else. We have a couple other roles for marrying you haven't heard, which is part of this. And you haven't seen, <laughs> let's see, you haven't seen one minute Toastmaster either. So things like that. But in general, it's going to be similar to the meeting that we've had today, only you guys are going to have to do everything. And we're going to have a couple extra roles. So we're going to polish a couple extra skills. And then before that, I wanted to get to, before we adjourn the meeting here, I wanted to get to the more formal presentation of their certificates, Jonathan. <laughs> I was not presenting Tony and Will. With <laughs> I was getting Tony and Will certificates so that they could give a formal presentation to the participants. And with that, I would like to give the first one to Jonathan for being such a wonderful member uh, you know, of not only Speechcraft, but tech messages slightly before that, and for being a leader amongst the Speechcraft participants, and for helping attempt to teach me a lesson earlier today. Hold everything down, Mike. We can just get straight shots. Just the windows in. And let's see, do I have Tony here to give up to give Chris his certificate as well? Thank you, Vince. I want to say that, Chris, stand up. Let everybody see you. Everybody is not in front of the camera. <laughs> it's been very, it's been kind of a great time having you come and join us. It's been very interesting and fascinating to watch how you progress as a speaker just over the past few weeks. And I really want to say that I'm looking forward to seeing you continue to progress. And it's going to be interesting to see all of our speech craft participants when we do reintroduce the bell, our friend. But Chris, great job. I look forward to a lot more. Thank you. Can you stand next to Jonathan, please? Oh, I'll try one more. Awesome. And now we have Will present Joe with his. Although you still have speech in there, just letting you know. Oh, good. Well, you have to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joe, I was your mentor. However, we didn't have a lot of interaction with you. We did do a couple of emails back and forth. I will say that from your first speech, which you can actually check out online on this is Google Plus, to where you are now, you have progressed. I'll also say that there are a number of people in the room, you as one of them, who have 
already good speech and already a pretty good speaker. Stay with us and we will make you better. I'd like to present you with this award. Hey, Mr. President, I have a certificate to give as well. And this is, you know, when you look at the club and where we were and where we are going and the kinds of things that help us grow as an organization and build up the right kinds of things, I think this is a great example of leadership and this is a great example of, of rising to the occasion. And I want to, I know it's a ton of work to put this on. So it's, it's with a, a lot of gratitude that um, as the founder of the club, I give you this award as a coordinator for. One more. We, we do have one more person, but she's not with us today. She's uh, Puerto Rico or Hawaii or something. Or somewhere a lot nicer and more warmer than here. So we'll give her a here. I think she's in Montana. I thought it was nicer. Oh, dang, I thought it was nice. Well, it still could be nicer, right? But my Here we go. Awesome. There we go. Great. Now, with that, I'm going to hurry up and adjourn the meeting so you can all get out of here. Uh, so then I got I higher rankings, others I got lower. It's still